Hi everybody, it's Denny Joe here. I just wanted to show you some stuff that I've been working on. This is a smoky flower. Um, you can check out the time lapse on Pour It Studio Instagram. Um, then this is the dried geode inspired black and white ghosty pour. Uh, it turned out really well. There's just a couple tiny cracks on the side uh, that I can go over with some gold, but otherwise it turned out really great. So let's uh, get into what I'm working on today. So, it's a small canvas. This is kind of like a painty playtime session. Um, I'm really experimenting with this idea, um, kind of what the smoky flower was like. Um, but anyways, here's the colors. Uh, we've got magenta, orange, yellow, phthalo blue, a custom mixed green, and ocean green. This is the consistency. It streams off the stick, leaves a mound. It's about two and a half parts flow trial to one part tube paint. It's Master's Touch tube paint. Uh, this is the Ghosty White. It's a mixture of Master's Touch White, Deco Art Satin Enamel White, and Flood Flow Trial. And then my base is one part Artist Loft Soft Body Black and one part US Flow Trial. So I'm going to lay down a little bit here. Not the full amount that I would normally do for a, an entire base because I am going to be adding a lot of the colors in the background as well. Um, so I don't need to use as much black right now. So I'm experimenting with some different styles of getting the colors in the background. So I have done cells in the past. This time I wanted to try um, a blended look, but by transferring the paint from another surface onto this surface. Um, it didn't quite go as intended, but again, this is kind of just a learning session for me. Um, I think next time if I do this, I'm going to make the paints actually thinner so that they blend more. Um, but here I'm just layering my cool colors, so my blues and my greens together, giving them a slight stir, trying to blend them somewhat. And I'm going to pour them onto uh, another solid surface. In this situation, I used a like plastic plate from the dollar store. Um, that's really good to use because the paint actually just peels right up off of there. Um, so here I am pouring it down, trying to get them to blend together a little bit. They actually stayed pretty separated. Um, when I scoop them up, you'll see here in a second, I do a, like a scoop and transfer. And it, uh, it, it, they kind of blend together a little bit. Um, here I'm kind of like spreading it out, trying to get... Um, you know, see what I'm working with, see what designs I might want to transfer. And come to find out, these don't really hold together. The paint's actually too thin to really um, hold up those designs and really be able to stretch them out. Um, they, they act a little bit differently than, say, the house paints when you're doing a bloom and you're using that base, um, that pouring medium. It's, it's a lot more stretchy, the binders in it. Um, stretch a lot more. So here I am transferring on some of the designs. Um, they really turned out to just be mostly stripey. So this would be a cool idea to do a whole entire painting this way. I could lay down an entire black base and then go through with those stripes and just like lay them all perfectly straight across. So you could use that you know, to do a landscape or just all stripes. That would look really cool. But in this situation, I wanted to make some background for some ghosty, smoky, petally, soft balloon smash things. So I'm going to uh, play some music here, speed it up, and I'll be back in a little bit to talk to you about the balloon smashing part.
All right, so I'm getting ready to do my balloon smashes. They're not the typical balloon smash. They're more of a, like a schmear. Like I'm very lightly dragging the white on the top of that surface using a partially inflated glove. Um, so you'll see I'm kind of just like pressing slightly and then dragging, lifting and dragging just a little bit lightly across the surface. And it makes these really cool little petally designs. I really like how those look. Uh, I've been experimenting with getting designs as you saw in that that painting in the intro. Like it's like a smoky soft petal look. I really like it. Um, I think like years ago Heather Mater Art might have done some similar designs by balloon rolls or smashes. Um, I think I might have remember seeing that. I think Gail Burston too does some schmears that look really cool. So kind of got my inspiration from them. Um, so anyways, <laughs> I'm working on these balloon roll drags, petals, and it's a learning experience here. So you'll see here in a second, Maybe not with this one, uh, but it sometimes takes a couple tries, and it's really not behaving the way that I would like it to. It's it's really tricky because when you press onto a surface, you're actually going to lift paint. The paint on the surface is going to stick to the thing that you're pressing down on. So, for example, I've seen. Olga Sobi, for example, like she erases parts that she doesn't like by like lightly dabbing them and they'll stick to her finger. So if you press lightly with your finger, it'll just lift it up off of there and it's like you're erasing a bad part. So here's an example, a perfect example of that. And I didn't intend to do it. I wanted to actually like make petals with that white part. But lo and behold, I forgot that this is what happens <laughs> when you press down on that paint, it's going to cling to that little balloon and lift right up. Poof, it's gone. All right, I'm gonna play some music again while I do the rest of the balloon smashes and I'll be back to talk about the marble roll. All right, so I'm about to do the marble roll. I really had to debate with myself if I wanted, wanted to do this or not, um, because there were so many cool petal designs that I didn't want to mess them up. But I ultimately decided to give the marble roll a try. Um, next time I think I would have like stayed, kept the marble more in the middle and just gotten that big block of white broken up a little bit. But um, I'm still pretty pleased with this as being an experiment. I was pleasantly surprised um, here I'm taking a look at it and thinking, I need some more paint because there's not enough to really stretch around. So I'm going to add some black around the edges here. I really like working from that big jug of paint. Um, it, it helps eliminate waste because I will only pour out of it what I need. Um, and so then, and it's easily to like add to it if I need to. Um, so I just continuously work from that same jug. So I'm stretching this out here pretty slowly. I didn't want to speed up this process. Um, I know in a lot of videos I've done, I, I have the tilting sped up. And it can be deceiving because my paint is actually pretty thick. And when I tilt, it actually takes a little bit of time to tilt it out. Um, so you got to be patient with it. Uh, I also like tilting as opposed to spinning. Um, the tilting to me seems to be part of like the editing process. So if there's a part maybe that I don't like so much, I'll, I can tilt it off. I can basically eliminate it. Um, that way I can also decide you know, which points I want to anchor first and stretch them out if I really like them. So I'm kind of making sure I go back to the middle before I stretch um, to a corner, and that helps eliminate any um, 
unnecessary, unintended squiggle lines. So the, the less um, changes of direction that you make, the better. If you just go one way and then back and the other way, it does less damage as if you're gonna do like basically a big swirl, a big circle around your painting. Exception to that, the dump and swirls. Those always turn out with nice puffy cells. So they kind of rise up after the fact. But if you were to get your pearls up and then try to do a swirl, it would get all wonky lines. All right, this is looking pretty good. I really like the red and um, the magenta and orange part. It kind of looks like flames um, a little bit there in the corner and uh, the green just like poking through. I am pretty pleased with this. I think I want to give it another go another time, but maybe work in some more color and maybe some more just black background space. So have like a ribbon of this color with the clouds going through a painting with a lot of black negative space around it. So lots of potential here. Uh, you'll probably see some more videos with this style. Uh, I'm going to set this down and do a couple still shots of it um, for you to look. And uh, I'm really glad that you watched this. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you. Bye.